If humans evolved from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys? This has probably been one of the most prominent questions seen in the world of science in science communication, right next to what came before the Big Bang and what are atoms made of? But it's not actually a bad question. In fact, we need to stop shaming people for asking it. I mean, what's the point of science if not to answer all of our burning questions? The people asking this question may just be blossoming scientists, yet we treat them like they're stupid just for trying to get one of their questions answered. The problem with this question lies not just in the misunderstanding of the person asking the question, but also with the miscommunication, by scientists, of how evolution actually works. I would venture to guess that, if someone is asking this question, they already have some kind of basic understanding in their head about how evolution works. And their understandings are probably right to some extent, but it needs to be elaborated upon. You see, this illustration, aptly titled The March of Progress, is likely what most people think of when they picture how human evolution works. They see an ape-like animal and see it gradually developing more human-esque features over time. But this figure is not really the best way to explain how evolution looked in humans. It's just the most efficient way to demonstrate it to someone that doesn't understand all the intricate concepts of biology and ecology. It's kind of like seeing a picture of how air gets pushed around a wing and allows a plane to fly. Sure, the main ideas of this illustration are true and it displays an easy way to understand how wings allow a plane to fly, but it ignores a lot of information, like how the air molecules interact with each other and how the thrust from the engines are contributing. The first major point to address for this question is this. Humans did not evolve from monkeys. We evolved from ancient primates, who evolved from little tree-climbing mammals, who evolved from a four-limbed fish, and so on. You see, the main issue with the March of Progress illustration is that it starts very late into the evolution of terrestrial animals, which we are. There is a huge heap of evolution that occurred to get to the point where this illustration just starts, which to us already seems like such a long time ago. The second major point to address is there are a lot of primates. Gorillas, chimps, howler monkeys, spider monkeys, orangutans, even lemurs. Humans aren't the only animals that evolved from ancient primates. Thinking that evolution should have replaced monkeys with humans is like asking why there are still cats if lions exist. It just doesn't work that way. Different species adapt to different environments. Take humans and gorillas, for example. Our ancestors split off from a common ancestor millions of years ago, but because they lived in different environments, they evolved in different ways. Gorillas' ancestors thrived in dense, tropical forests where food was abundant, and over time, they adapted the ability to digest tougher vegetation efficiently. They developed powerful jaws, and they stayed in areas where climbing and short-distance travel were enough to survive. Meanwhile, early human ancestors found themselves in more open terrain, like grasslands or savannas where food wasn't as concentrated. They had to cover more ground to find fruit, uh, roots, and even scavenged meat. This pressured them to walk upright over long distances, leading to the evolution of bipedalism, walking on two legs instead of four. But remember, if you rewind far enough, both human and gorilla ancestors will still trace back to a shared starting point, as does that ancestor with another species. So, a better way to phrase this question would be, if humans evolved from ancient primates, then why are there no more ancient primates? And now the answer feels a lot more obvious. They all evolved and diverged into different species. They wouldn't be ancient primates if they were still around. A final point to make in helping people understand evolution is to clarify that evolution is not alive. It does not have a goal, it does not choose anything. It is literally just a mechanism that we created to help us understand how species adapt to their environment in all of the different ways that we see. When scientists say that a species evolved a certain trait, what they are really saying is that the trait was more beneficial for it than a trait that it had previously had, whether it be fur color, size, or even a new trait like an extra set of legs or eyes. But hold on, I know what you're thinking now after I said that. How would a species just randomly get a new set of legs? Well, that was a wise choice of words. It is almost literally random. Most of the evolutionary traits that we see come from random mutations. For example, uh, let's say there's a green bug, and this bug is green because it helps it blend in with the grass and helps it avoid being eaten by birds. But let's just say this bug is adventurous, or maybe it was relocated into a new environment where there's less grass. Now let's say the ground is mostly made up of dirt. These green bugs no longer have an advantage in being green. Now these bugs start getting picked off by the birds because their green color makes them stand out in the dirt. But suddenly, one or two of these bugs have a totally random mutation in their genes, which happens all the time. And remember, mutations are not always bad. It literally just means that the DNA changed in one small section. And this mutation makes them lose their green pigment, which makes them darker in color. These new bugs with completely random mutations that just change their color now have the advantage over the green versions of the bug. These brown bugs will get picked off less and less by the birds and their survival allows them to mate more and more until that random mutated gene becomes a commonly passed down gene in that species. But that is a somewhat drastic and fast change in a trait seen in a species. It's not like gaining a new leg, so how does that happen? 
Well, first off, it's important to understand that most evolutionary traits come from millions of years of very, very small changes. It's not like a fish just suddenly birthed a human. That fish's species had millions and millions of offspring that have eventually changed environments, or the environment they lived in slowly changed and their advantageous traits were more or less advantageous. So as a species keeps having more and more offspring, sometimes they'll be born with tiny differences. Again, that happens all the time. It's just natural. Most of these changes won't matter, but every now and then one might have an advantage, maybe helping them find food more easily or just survive a little better in any way. Over millions of years, these small helpful changes can add up, slowly shaping the species into something different from what it once was. And remember, these are literally tens, hundreds, millions, billions of years. We're not saying that this happens in a lifetime, a hundred lifetimes, or even a thousand lifetimes. These changes are often very, very slow and very, very small, but their effects are not insignificant. Now imagine a fish living in shallow waters millions of years ago. Some may have been born with slightly stronger fins, which would help them push through the muddy areas a little better. Over thousands and thousands of generations, these tiny changes kept adding up. Fins that were sturdier, bones that supported more weight, and muscles that helped them move in shallow water or even on land for short bursts. Slowly, these fins turned into primitive legs, and eventually, some of these fish weren't just swimming anymore. They were walking. So, to bring it all together, evolution isn't a ladder, and it doesn't have an end goal. It's a slow, branching process where species adapt to their environments in different ways over millions and billions of years. This is why humans exist alongside other primates, rather than replacing them. We all share a common ancestor, but through countless tiny changes, we've each taken our own evolutionary path. Understanding this doesn't just answer the why are there still monkeys question, it helps us see the bigger picture of how life is all connected. Evolution explains everything from why birds have different beaks to how fish grew their legs. Evolution is likely the most influential idea that has ever occurred in the realm of biology, and it unites and answers so many phenomena that it baffled us before. Science isn't about making people bad for not knowing something, it's about learning, questioning, and uncovering the incredible story of everything. So keep asking questions because that's exactly how we move forward.